doing the right thing, doing the thing right. I think Rick inspired all of us when he said we're doing the right thing. It is true. We are doing the right thing. And so let us quickly understand, as Peter Drucker, the famous management consultant, pointed out, it's a manager's job to do something the right way, but it's the executive's job to do the right thing. Because what if you're doing the wrong thing efficiently? What if you have Six Sigma perfection as you do the wrong thing? You are now perfectly wrong. So our job is not to do something perfectly. First, our job is to figure out what is the right thing to do. So we move from efficiency to effectiveness, and then we do it efficiently. Nothing wrong with that, that's for sure. But really, we want total quality. We insist on total quality. We think quality is a human right. We're not just doing quantification. If we just do quantification, we see a world of limits, and we talk about the population problem. Oh my goodness, the minute we look at a child being born anywhere in the world and say, you're a problem, human rights cease to exist. It is our job to do the right thing by them and celebrate them coming into the world with this generosity. And we can do this. Deming, who is a friend, people don't realize this, I want a little shout out to the women in the room. People don't realize Deming was put by the War Department to watch the women in the factories during the Second World War. And they were kind of slow to start, you know, the men had been making a thousand artillery shells a day, they you know, lost 23 to inspections for quality lapses. Then they put the women in and they made 40 and then they made 100 and then they made 500 and then anyway, they ended up making 1400. The women were about 40% more productive than men. And they didn't have inspections. And they, did, they sat in circles and they shared the work and they would send stuff back if it wasn't perfect. And they produced 1,400 perfectly. Think about it. They didn't want them blowing up on their husbands' faces. They didn't have exhortations. Anyway, Deming at the end of the war said, hey everybody, you should see what happened while you were gone. And they came back and said, excuse me, we're hierarchical, inspection-based, and we won the war. You're out of here. So what did he do? He went to Japan. And where do you think the Toyota production system came from? the women in America. Bravo, bravo. And what do we, do we care? Do we care about our children? Do we care about what quality really is? Well, if we do, then what is the role of the systems of survival, the syndromes, as Jane Jacob calls them? What is the role of design and what is the role of business? What I love about the Uscreen Building Council is it's such a beautiful place for us to come together to dialogue around these things and to express our intentions and to debate and move the dialogue up to where it belongs. Well-intentioned humans doing wonderful things. Has somebody got a problem with this? Our goal is not to be less bad. Our goal is a delightfully diverse, safe, healthy, and just world with clean air, clean water, clean power, economically, equitably, ecologically, and elegantly enjoyed, period. That's it. And we're not saying less unjust or less unsafe. We're not saying less anything. We're saying let's get on with the quality of life itself. So what is the role of commerce in the Guardian? As Jane Jacobs points out, two syndromes of human behavior. So today, we have people representing commerce. Obviously, these are manufacturers and chemists you're sitting here looking at. These people do this for the right reasons. And they've been doing it for 15, 20 years. Isn't that amazing? And we take it as this long to get the protocol in full form and give it away to the public. Isn't that something? That long, because it's hard and it's detailed, okay? Well, commerce is about the freedom to exchange value. And as Warren Buffett, you know, who, whose company heads own Shaw, said, we want a level playing field. Just tell us it's a level playing field and we'll figure out what to do. That's our job, we're business people. And if you want it this way and it's better, we'll do that. Just make it a level playing field and don't fiddle with it, okay? 
The other, the Guardian's job, is to keep us free from intergenerational remote tyranny. So we're free to function, right? And stop the tyranny. So a regulation, in my book, is a signal of design failure. Does that mean we don't want regulations? Of course not. What I'm saying is very simple. There's something wrong. Society says, oh, got to regulate it. Because it's supposed to do that. That's the job of the guardian, is to protect us. But they're expensive, and they take time. And why do we want them? Look at the history of environmental legislation. Look at that. Is this what we want? Are these the charts we want up to the right? How many regulations we need to keep us from killing each other too quickly? Is that it? So when we designed this product for Steelcase in the early 90s, we designed a fabric that made the water coming out of a textile mill clean enough to drink. We moved from 249 chemicals to 38. The trimming, which used to be declared hazardous waste by the Swiss government, had to be shipped to Spain. Couldn't be buried or burned in Switzerland, can you imagine? Became nutrients for the local garden club. Now it pushes up strawberries. They're still making economic fabric in Switzerland. How many textile industries you got next door? Switzerland, really? And it's been selected by the Airbus 380 as the safest and most effective seating product in the world. That's kind of nice, clean air in an airplane, it's a good idea, but the other good news is if you found yourself at 40,000 feet with a serious extreme fiber deficiency, you could safely eat your chair. <laughs> so, this is about quality, so let me bring out Jared Blumenfeld, the regional director for this area of California and the United States, Region 9. Jared Blumenfeld, the regulator.